Pick the Six starts right now. An exhaustive search four months passed, but no sign of little doll sight. Where is she? What's happened to her? Tonight, the feds talk and we press for answers. A twisted investigation of foster mother murdered, two people missing, and one 17-year-old police say could be behind it all. This South Philadelphia neighborhood will never be the same after an explosion toppled homes and left two people dead. Now today the residents are saying they just want things to go back to normal. Trash on the sidewalk, it's an eyesore for anyone, but now you can get paid to pick it up. Prepare for a nippy night tonight with temperatures that are in the 20s, even the teens in Mount Pocono, and windy as well. Winter is coming back. A tangled web in the murder of a Philadelphia foster mom. The person charged in her murder, her teen foster son. And police say that's not the only murder he's now charged with. Thanks for joining us for the six. I'm Jason Martinez. Our Dave Schratweiser leading things off for us tonight. He joins us live at Philadelphia Police Headquarters. And Dave, a lot going on in this investigation. No doubt about it, Jay. Homicide investigators unraveled these two murders in a little over 24 hours. They say the motive for both murders is robbery. Tonight, that teenager faces two counts of murder, robbery, theft, and other charges. Foster mother Renee Gilliard was 65, and Jimmy Mao was just 20. Police now say both were brutally murdered. Another foster son, 17 year old Xavier Johnson, is now charged with their murders. Both Ms. Gilliard and Mr. Mal were brutally tortured and then murdered by Xavier Johnson. Police arrested Johnson overnight after Mal's body was found behind a home on Angora Terrace. He had been stabbed in the face and neck. Mr. Mal had been killed, his body placed inside a black duffel bag and taken to this location where he was thrown down a hill. By function of law, when murder charges are brought, they are charged as an adult. Gilliard was discovered unresponsive in a bathtub Wednesday morning in the 300 block of Mechanic Street. Homicide investigators say robbery was the motive in both murders. We believe that there was a uh, PlayStation console and video games that were involved. Now, Renee Gilliard is the mother of a Philadelphia police officer. Homicide detectives did recover a knife. They are testing that knife to see if it was the murder weapon. Johnson will be arraigned on those charges overnight. Jason. Dave Schratweiser live at Philadelphia Police Headquarters. Thank you, Schrat. A historic moment in our nation's capital today. The articles of impeachment against President Trump walked into the Senate as Chief Justice John Roberts swore in 100 senators who will serve as jurors in the trial. Fox's Lauren Blanchard joins us live in Washington tonight. Lauren. Jason, after a busy day here in Washington, it is quieter now in the Capitol. The Senate is out and will reconvene Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern for the trial, during which senators must sit at their desks with no phones, no talking, no working on anything but impeachment. The managers on the part of the House of Representatives are present and ready to present the articles of impeachment. The impeachment trial officially underway. Chief Justice John Roberts trekking to the Capitol from the Supreme Court to swear in all 100 senators. You will do impartial justice according to the Constitution and laws, so help you God. The Senate then agreeing to notify the president's defense team the trial had begun. However, the substance of the trial doesn't come until next week when the managers and the defense make their case. The beginning of the impeachment trial today will be largely ceremonial. But soon, our duty will be constitutional. The House's hour is over. The Senate's time is at hand. The managers marched for a second time across the Capitol to read the articles of abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. Only hours after news broke, a government watchdog agency found the White House did violate federal law when they withheld military aid to Ukraine, which is what sparked the whole impeachment investigation. The White House calls the findings an overreach. I can only tell you this thing is a big hoax. It's a big hoax. 
And before the trial really gets underway, the House managers must turn in their briefs Saturday evening. The president's defense team is due Monday afternoon, and if the House wants a rebuttal, that is due one hour before the Senate reconvenes on Tuesday. Live in Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox 29 News. And I am live bundled up outside because it is windy, it is cold. I'm wearing my windbreaker here to demonstrate how much the wind is going. Do you remember the movie American Beauty? That beautiful scene with the most beautiful thing I've ever seen? That's it. That's that bag. Winds are whipping around pretty good. Let's look at those wind gusts right now to show you how the winds are moving. We're talking about the 20s and the 30s. Now, Wilmington has a 45 mile per hour wind gust, 30 in Atlantic City. So the winds have calmed down a bit from last hour where Philadelphia was at 37. We still have that wind advisory that's in effect, and that's until 7 o'clock tonight. We're expecting the winds at times, again, to gust to 40 to 50 miles per hour, which is what we are seeing in Wilmington right now. Let's look at the windshield planner so you can plan your evening because you really need your jacket. By 10 o'clock tonight, we're in the upper 20s. We'll see the skies clear up pretty good, and then we'll be in the teens by the early morning hours. At least that's what it's going to feel like out there. So winter is back. We're going to talk more about that when I come up inside in the confines of the nice warm studio. Back to you. We'll see you in here, Jeff. Thank you very much. In the local tonight, from a new plan to clean up city streets to the latest from the feds in the search for Dulce Maria Alaves. But first, our Chris O'Connell has new information about who Philadelphia police found dead inside a trash can. New details tonight on a grisly murder earlier this week in Alney. I'm Chris O'Connell. It all happened here on 6th and Rockland Street. You see where the police tape still remains. This is where the body of a 22 year old man was found stuffed in a trash can. That man identified today as Darius Cheeseboro of Alney. Police say he was lured to a home about a block away from here. He was then stabbed and beaten to death, but it wasn't until a 14 year old girl came forward to a school official to say she knew about a murder of her ex-boyfriend. She said it happened the day after Christmas. Tuesday, police discovered his body beaten and partially dismembered. Today, police still saying they're working to find a killer. That investigation is still very active, and so we have to be really guarded uh, with the information that we reveal uh, about that. We'd be really it, it, we don't want to put ourselves in a position where we compromise the, the fluidity and, and, and the success of the investigation. A source also telling Fox 29 another man was brought to that home the same night of the murder, was also beaten and left for dead, but that man was able to escape. He's recovering from serious injuries in the hospital. As police say, they may be close to identifying a person's of interest in the case. Dulce Alaves's picture taped to a post in the park where she went missing four months ago. I'm Jeff Cole in Bridgeton, New Jersey. Today, federal investigators spoke about the case, offering little new. Once again, they asked the public to call them if they have any information. Also, the head of a rapid deployment child abduction unit says they arrived here in the park 24 hours after the abduction. Time is never uh, our friend in, in these because time means uh, either distance or uh, a plot or something's gone on or somebody's been moved or uh, the leads are getting stale. We never give up hope. We never um, call it quits. We never stop working until uh, the child has been recovered. A weathered memorial still stands in the park where Dulce went missing. Federal investigators say they are no longer focused on two license plates they released but are still interested in the sketch of the mail. In in New Jersey, I'm Jeff Cole. I'm Alex George in South Philadelphia, and this is the damage one month after a fire ripped through row homes here on 8th and Reed Street. Residents say the city hasn't given them any answers to what the root cause was of the explosion. That three alarm fire took two lives last month, and residents say they're living in fear it could happen again. And I do want to apologize to all the residents. Y'all have been through hell, and I, I can't I can't imagine what it's been like waking up every day. Um, and if, if we, we are doing everything we can to address those concerns. Feeling like their complaints were ignored, residents came to a meeting with the city today to say they are fed up. 
We're going to continue to keep you guys informed. When is it going to start? You are not continuing to do anything with us. We are looking for information. We're trying to decide if our lives are going to be safe, if our homes are going to be safe, and we are getting really no information at all. The city says they are currently investigating new leaks on this block as well as the cause of that initial gas leak. And the residents say each day that goes by is another day that they're fearing for their lives. Marcus Espinoza in Logan, where City Council hopes to encourage you to pick up trash off the ground so you can put money in your pocket. It's all part of a $10 million program that's going to pay for 30 cleaning ambassadors in each council district. It's going to pay up to $15 an hour, and you can work up to 20 hours a week. It's part time, and you can put extra money in your pocket while keeping your neighborhood and business corridors clean. I spoke with one local business owner who said she's entirely Entirely happy that this is finally happening and it's helping her business. Immediate turnaround. Like in about two days, we saw no trash on the ground. And we have a high school up the street, and when the young people walk past, they're holding their trash, and that means something. If you'd like to participate in this program in your district, you're encouraged to reach out to Council Member Parker, who helps start the program. She can point you in the right direction, and you could be on your way to picking up trash and putting some extra money in your pocket. In Logan, Marcus Espinoza. Across the nation, a hot mic moment after the last Democratic debate is causing a major rift between two top candidates. In newly released video from CNN, a heated moment between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. I think you called me a liar on national TV. I think you called me a liar on national no. TV. Let's not do it right now. You want to have that discussion, we'll have that discussion. You now, this exchange came after Warren claimed Sanders told her a woman couldn't win the presidency when they spoke about the race back in 2018. Sanders flatly denies saying that, and Warren declined to shake his hand after the debate ended. And another company is closing most of its stores. Bose announced it will close all of its stores in North America, Europe, Japan, and Australia. The company blames online shopping for the closures. The closings could lay off potentially hundreds of people around the world. World. The 119 stores, including in King of Prussia and Christiana Mall, will start to close in the coming months. Yikes, a car goes right through a game store, leaving behind a massive hole and a slew of damage. And the driver, bye-bye, she just left. Out before reaching home, Carlos Beltran out of here for the Mets. That's three managers gone in three days. So what's the move now for these MLB teams? You got to see this. A driver in Indianapolis crashed right into a gaming store, a bit of a little gash on the side of the building, and then wait for it. Bye bye. There she goes, just walking away. It's not even a hit and run, that's a hit and walk. And look at the damage left behind a giant gaping hole and debris scattered everywhere inside the shop. It's not clear what caused the SUV to go into the store. Tonight, police are still trying to track down the driver. Carlos Beltran is out as Mets manager. Now three teams are looking for leaders with less than a month until spring training. Is Beltran the last domino to fall or are players next? <laughs> Plus two teams battling to be the last team standing in the NFC. Packers, 49ers. We're picking our favorites to go to the Super Bowl. What do you think? Here we go. Sports director Tom Shredencheck, Kristen Rogers, sports anchor joining me now. And the Mets and Carlos Beltran mutually part ways. That's the vocabulary on this one. The reality is, though, he was the only player named in this dossier, and you can't have a cheater leading a team. So, Kristen, is this the final domino? Is this scandal over now? Jason, this is far from over, and here's why. Earlier today, a Twitter account claiming to be the niece of Carlos Beltran came out and is trying to set fire to the entire Astros team and everything that happened. She says that Jose Altuve and other players were known for wearing buzzers underneath their jerseys, and this is opening up a whole new can of worms. Now you have players 
other players right now reaching out like Cody Bellinger on Twitter just put out if this is true something needs to happen and I agree with that if there are players and there is evidence the MLB has to meet with the Players Association and something has to happen at this point Kristen and Jason first of all Jason when you get dossier into a segment it's a better segment but Kristen back <laughs> to your point what is the end of this thing and I don't know what it is but right now enough is enough they got the three guys involved Major League Baseball will never 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 open up a scandal with the players they don't want to start this with the Players Association look Major League Baseball knows they have a problem this has existed for years and it will continue to exist stop enough you got the three guys move on oh come on. I don't agree with that no, there at has all. move on guys there has to the be seat. accountability there, there was has a steroid to be accountability. scandal in the 90s and the sport survived didn't it it's just a good thing at this point with three teams needing managers I just just happy the Phillies have Joe Girardi right now locked <laughs> up because you know one of these other three teams would have really wanted him yeah. uh, real quick on the NFC championship game coming up this Sunday on Fox 29 Niners and Packers let's make some picks go first give me Mr. Danica Patrick give me Aaron <laughs> Rodgers going back to Northern California taking care of Jimmy Garoppolo Kristen no way Come it is on. the 49ers for two reasons they are the healthiest team left in the playoffs and Kyle Shanahan since the Atlanta Atlanta Falcons debacle has proved he is the best you offensive double mind check. in the league you right need now a double right check. there with you Kristen nah, all Niners all day so we, we can't sports betting legal here in uh, in, in Pennsylvania let's shreds so let's go, go let's pack. do it kickoff 640 here on Fox 29 thanks guys oh no Odell Beckham Jr. He's a lightning rod for headlines, and he's in the news yet again today. Of course, you know him as the Cleveland Browns receiver. He's all over the place. He makes great catches, but he makes some bad decisions, apparently. Lena Chappelle is here, and we're talking about something on Fox 29 that you have to see. There's a warrant out for his arrest right now. Tell us what happened. So basically what happened post game after LSU won their big championship, he was in the locker room and there was a security officer slash police officer in, in the locker room. And for some reason he thought it was a good idea to, to smack the officer on his butt. Yeah. And it was caught on camera and then shared and went viral on Twitter. So most of LSU, he went to LSU. They won the national championship the other night. Yeah, and they were smoking cigars. The officer was trying to tell him, put the cigars out. And Odell just comes up right behind him and smacks him on the butt. Yep, exactly, yeah, that. exactly that. Yeah, and you, can, and you can't do that. So he's apparently out for an arrest warrant with simple assault. And people are just like baffled. A, people are like, why would you do that? What was he thinking? And part of this article also on Fox29.com is that he also gave money out to other players in exchange for shoes, or I don't know what it was in exchange for. Did he really give money out? Well, there's a lot of speculation that the money was fake. Odell has said it himself. He's like, oh, it wasn't real money because technically you can't do that. You can't give players money. We haven't heard confirmation about that yet. It's yeah. just speculation. It might have been for show, handing out money. So, man, all he wanted to do was celebrate a national championship. Now, worn out for his arrest. Maybe NCAA investigation, we'll have to see. But, boy, just click this on fox29.com. So you know you're being watched and recorded. Yeah, busted. Cameras rolling when the guy breaks into someone else's home. And did you catch what he's wearing? That's a Papa John's uniform. Just so you know you're being watched and recorded. A burglar caught on camera forcing his way into a Las Vegas home dressed in a Papa John's uniform. First, he's scared off by that dog barking. Did you see that? He jumped out of his shoes. Anyway, then he returns and begins to ransack the place. That's until the homeowner lets the suspect know, the thief, that he's being watched and finally makes his getaway. So former Eagle Harold Carmichael spoke today about his big honor, the highest honor in all of football, being selected to the Hall of Fame. The former wide receiver told us that he learned early on with the birds about expectations because Eagles fans let him know, and those expectations are really what drove him to be a better player. He said that ultimately that helped him reach football's ultimate shrine, being selected into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Let's go outside where it feels like Canton or even colder. Doylestown, Bucks County, and those winds, with that, but judging by that flag, are really whipping out there. And you think it's cold now? Let's just wait until tomorrow. Meteorologist Jeff Robbins has your forecast in 15 seconds. Hi, I'm Brandon Swartz. And I'm Christopher Culleton. If you've been hurt at work, report the injury and seek immediate medical care. Then call a workers' compensation attorney. At Swartz Culleton, we've been representing local work injury victims for over 20 years. 
You're definitely going to need the parka on the parkway. It's a little bit cold out there, 43 degrees, but when you factor in the wind chill, it feels like 35. Tonight overnight, going down to about 26 degrees, but the winds will still be gusting in the 30s, so it's going to feel like the teens overnight. As we look at your Foxcast for tomorrow, sunny skies, but 34 degrees. It'll feel like it's in the low 20s because it's still going to be rather breezy. Here's a seven-day forecast from the Weather Authority. Looking at Saturday, unfortunately, going back to winter. Winter, snow changing over to rain, and then it's going to be 40 degrees for a high on Saturday. We'll see decreasing clouds on Sunday and 39 degrees. Then we get cold again in the low 30s, but at least we'll have some nice sunshine, Jason. All right, thanks very much. Uh, another fun episode of The Classroom just minutes away. Richard Curtis hosts Servium Girls Academy in Newcastle, Delaware. It's teachers versus students. It's just minutes away at 630 right here after the 6. So, Jason, we just yeah. talked about former Eagle Harold Carmichael being selected for the Pro Football yep. Hall of Fame Centennial Class. So, our Stumpy Anger question for you tonight is, Harold Carmichael is the tallest NFL receiver ever at 6'8". So, who's the second tallest wide receiver in NFL history? You think about it at home. Jason's going to give his, us mm. his answer next. Hey, everybody's talking about this meme here today. It shows a Girl Scout surrounded by Girl Scout cookies with the caption, I got clean for nearly a year until I ran into my dealer. And of course, people are fired up about it. So we asked you, our viewers, to sound off on this one. It was very insensitive. It was very upsetting. It was very hurtful. I am a parent that lost their son a year and a half ago to a drug overdose laced with fentanyl. I do find that insensitive because, like most people out there, when I hear the word dealer, I associate that word with drugs, not the Girl Scouts or Girl Scout cookies. A joke that a lot of people aren't laughing yeah. at here. Keep your responses coming. Tag us on Instagram at Fox 29 Philly. So let's get yes. back to your, the trivia your trivia question. Who is the second tallest wide receiver in NFL history? The tallest, of course, is Harold Carmichael. Do you guys have My, any answers? I have a horrible guess. I'm thinking Megatron. Calvin Johnson, he was mm -hmm, pretty tall, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I got yeah. it for you, you guys. You got one? Wait. Brandon Banks. No. 5'7". <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, these guys are both 6'6". Six, 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 six. It's Pat McAnally. He played for the Bengals until 1985. He was in a Pro Bowler. Oh. 1981 and Chris Durham he was drafted in 2011 and played for the Seattle Seahawks Gosh. so there you go surprised it's not somebody you know more recent know. Yeah, it's a it's a tough position all right that does it for us here at six o'clock don't go anywhere the classroom starts right now